destroyed hostility he came and preached the good news of peace dona nobis pacem domine dona nobis pacem domine lord jesus Jesus Christ you said to your apostles I leave you peace my peace I give to you look not on our sins but on the faith of your church and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom Good morning, church. Welcome to worship at First United Methodist Church in Burlington. I'm Pastor Carrie Cameron, and I'm so glad you have joined us for worship this morning. Following Jesus can be hard sometimes, and it sometimes takes extraordinary efforts to keep on going and move with him in a new direction. Dr. Marsha McPhee from Worship Design Studio says each of us is called to follow Jesus while at the same time protecting the earth and healing any scars of our past. We are called to health of humanity while at the same time the health of the planet. Humanity and planet needs healing, and we cannot ignore the cries of the earth. The first cry we're going to have today is one called Happy Birthday for our office manager, Pam. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God.
Amen. Amen. Happy birthday, Pam. Thank you for all that you do uh, for us here at First United Methodist Church. And now we're going to sing about the earth that we are called to take care of, God of the Sparrow, 122 in your hymnals if you have them or on the screen. Please join me in the call to worship. Vessels holy and whole, broken, needing the one, open, body and soul, healer, come. Let us unite our hearts in the opening prayer. God of wind and fire, wave and shore, blow through our lives this day that we might be empowered to move throughout the vastness of your land bringing the good news and healing to all who needs a healing touch from you O oh god guide us this day to look beyond ourselves to the world around us help us to see the world as you see it O oh god Give us strength and power to care for it as you would. Let it be so. Amen. Let all mortal flesh keep silent.
Beat the six wing at seraph, cherubim with sleepless eye, veil their faces to the presence as with ceaseless voice they. Thank you, Sue, for touching us with that beautiful music and words. I'm going to be reading the Gospel of Matthew this morning, chapter 8, verses 18 through 27. There's a cost to following Jesus. When Jesus saw the crowd around him, he gave orders to cross to the other side of the lake. Then a teacher of the law came to him and said, Teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus replied, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. Another disciple said to him, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. But Jesus told him, Follow me and let the dead bury their own dead. Then Jesus got into the boat, and his disciples followed him. Without warning, a furious storm came up on the lake, so that the waves swept over the boat. But Jesus was sleeping. The disciples went and woke him up, saying, Lord, save us, we're going to drown. And Jesus replied, You of little faith, why are you so afraid? Then he got up and rebuked the winds and the waves, and it was completely calm. The men were amazed and asked, What kind of man is this? Even the winds and the waves obey him. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. children praying. Lord, send your spirit on this place. Lord, listen to your children praying. Send us love, send power, send us grace. Lord, 
Send your spirit in this place, in this time, that we might hear your word touching our hearts so that we might be moved to a new direction. We might be willing to let the winds blow us to and fro, all for your glory and your sake, O God. May the words of my mouth, the meditations of all of us that are gathered together near and far, be acceptable to you, you who are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. We cry to Jesus to come and protect, and we get reprimanded. You of little faith, why are you afraid? Storms in our lives come up every day, and we cry, Lord, rescue me, save me, save us. I often think the Lord expects that some of the saving should come from our own power and not all directly from the Lord. For weeks we have been wrestling with the fact that we are indeed a broken people, like sea glass washed against the sands of time, in need of God's presence, in need of God's healing. Each week we've come closer and closer to being made whole again, with a quick wisdom band-aid here and a little foundational glue there, our brokenness has begun to heal. Our goal has always been moving towards complete restoration, which can take place with our strong belief in the power of God, our willingness to work on our own behalf, and our eagerness to stand up to the winds and powers that often knock us back down. Restoration comes when we completely trust that Jesus has our best interest at heart. Restoration comes when we truly believe that the winds will not destroy us. Why? Because we have Jesus. Jesus tells the teacher or the scribe in today's story that he has no place to lay his head, no place to call home, a small hint that he is soon to be rejected by those he came to save. Jesus questions the scribe if he's truly ready to walk with him. And though the scribe said he was, I wonder if the young man fully understood what was being asked of him. Was he prepared to pay the price of being a follower of Christ? Are we? There is so much to gain by being a follower, but there's much to lose as well in our walk with the Lord. We might lose friends and family. We might be considered weird or outcast. We might be belittled and persecuted. In my own home growing up, we were not allowed to talk religion. Can you imagine? We weren't allowed to speak of Jesus. You and I might have to give up hobbies or activities to be fully present to God in God's church. It's not easy, but Jesus asked us to follow. And when we say yes, he says, are you truly ready, ye of little faith? When we finally agree to follow willingly, healing begins to happen. Excitement replaces fear. Hope drives out doubt. And there's a sense of peace that comes. Jesus expects, along with his presence, we're going to take part in caring for ourselves and others, while at the same time, we're going to take care of the world that is around us, the world that was given to us to take care of. And all the while, it may not seem that Jesus is there, perhaps maybe he's sleeping on the end of the boat. He is keeping a watchful eye over the winds of life that keep knocking us down. In today's lesson, Jesus uses this visual of wind and wave for the difficulty 
that would lie ahead, not only for himself, but all his followers. The concept of wind, the people could truly understand. Air movements were a strong influence in the climate of the Holy Land. Israelites believed it was God that set the four winds at play. The west wind, which was laden with moisture from the Mediterranean, would lower the heat of the scorching days while dropping dew at night over all the vegetation. The west wind in winter brought thunderstorms and much needed rain. The wind from the south came in hot and heavy in the in-between seasons, perfect for growing their crops. And the far east wind, strong enough that God could use it to part the Red Sea. So wind for these people clearly gave pause to give attention to, and perhaps even being a little afraid. Yes, they understood wind. When it comes to taking care of creation, there should be a bit of fear as well. For we've not always kept God's creation safe and well cared for. Author Stephen Grant says God left us in charge of creation But taken on a global scale, we have not been particularly good caretakers. It's as if we've moved in God's house, but then we trashed it. Remember those days of hugging a tree? When we cared enough to try and keep that tree alive by the hands of destroyers? When did we stop hugging The trees. When did that happen? When did fear take over? Oh, we've done well in so many ways. We can't deny it. We've invested in in every um, energy-efficient appliance that we can. We've reduced waste, both waste and water waste. We've done solar heating. We've stopped the use of plastic in bags and straws and those plastic six-pack holders by cutting them up so that we won't endanger wildlife. We've started recycling and composting, and yet there is still much more to do. And most disturbing was a fact I found. In 2013, a study was done that showed Christians having a lower level of environmental concern than non-Christians. That's really sad when God gave us dominion to care for his creation. That's very sad. It's important for all of us to realize that environmental restorations are religious issues. We are reminded of it in Genesis 1, 26, 28. Let man have dominion over all the earth. Let man rule over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, over all the wild animals and the lowly creatures that move on the ground. We have been put in charge of caring for God's creation. The earth would certainly be better off. If each of us stood up, not afraid, allowed the rock of a boat to hit us and the waves to crash over us because we're standing up for something that is good and expected of us. Even our teens are not afraid to stand on the boat as they gather worldwide on April 20th and 21st for a youth summit on what? Climate control. And they're doing it to honor Earth Day on April 22nd. They are fostering fearless leaders and behaviors with one another. And they're going to present a petition to the president before his climate control summit. We can learn a lot from our children. And not being afraid is one of them. Not being afraid of restoration is what's going to move us forward, both as individuals and as a collective body, all with the intent of following the one 
who might seem asleep on the end of the boat, but is fully awake to our presence. And that one has our best interest at heart. Jesus rebukes the very things that cause us fear. And with his presence, a calmness is left in the wake. We have to be ready to go. We cannot cry, Lord, save us, we're going to drown. We have been in a healing process since the beginning of our Lenten journey. And now that we've been patched, we're ready. We're ready to step outside of the boat. We can continue to be afraid of the changes that will incur in ourselves or others and our planet, or we can walk alongside Jesus, like that young man in today's lesson, broken, patched, and we can be crying these words instead. Teacher, teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. To God be the glory. Amen. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me. Please join me in the prayer of confession. O oh God, how we forget you have dominion from sea to sea, from the river to the ends of the earth. O oh God, how we forget that we are called not to pollute the land in which we live. O oh God, we forget that you have given us dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over the livestock and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on earth. O oh God, we also forget to care for others as you have cared for us. We who are strong have an obligation to bear the weaknesses of those without strength. Forgive us, O oh God, for not caring about the same things you care about. And now I offer an assurance of pardon. Blessed is the one whose transgressions are forgiven, 
whose sins are covered, you are blessed. And let us continue in a spirit of prayer. Lord, creator of all things, your beauty, your power, your strength, wisdom, and grace we cannot ignore. You have given us the boat of life to sail on, and we often are too afraid to ride easily. We cry out to you when things don't seem right or go our way or we feel afraid. Each time you come with a calmness that can still anyone's heart. You wonder why we can't simply trust you. Oh, Jesus. And each time we know you are wondering where is our faith. Lord, today we are trusting in you that you will see fit to watch over our communities of faith as they begin to discern going back into the temples. We trust that you will provide a way for us to move ahead, growing larger, more spiritual, less afraid, not only to ourselves, but to those we meet, to those who enter our doors, to those we have yet to meet. We place our bishop, our DS, our cabinet, our denomination in your hands and all other Christians across the globe. See to it that we move smoothly into new life created by those who are not afraid to rock the boat. Lord, thank you for being with us, never leaving us alone to try and go it alone. Your security means so much to us. Today we pray for our Asian American brothers and sisters in the wake of the recent killings. Help us, O oh Lord, to stand against racism. We pray for those whom we love, Julia, as she was under the weather last week. I ask for personal privilege to pray for my Aunt Teresa, who fell this very morning and is currently seeking help in the hospital. We pray for Sue in Oregon, who is having a double mastectomy. We pray for Liz's dad, as he has further medical issues requiring surgery. We pray for Steve-O, as he begins his cancer treatments. May your healing touch, O oh God, touch and be present with each of them, even as the winds blow their boat to and fro, we know you will be present in your healing ways. And finally, O oh Lord, blow your wind of calm into each of our souls as we pray, just like you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. And the people say, Amen. And now we take a moment of silence to consider the giving of ourselves and our gifts to God. Let us pray the blessing over our givings. God of life, we thank you for sending Jesus to glorify your name. You ask us always to be with the poor, 
Teach us to remember their needs first. Teach us to remember the beautiful gifts of earth you have given us and help us to give our gifts without counting the cost as we would give to your son, Jesus Christ, who reigns with you and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for your generosity this day. Our life this week begins, of course, this afternoon with a soup supper, feeding the homeless. Um, tomorrow evening, we have our Lenten study at 6.30. Um, our regular meetings of the beloved, our conversations, Wednesday at 6.30, Thursday morning at 8.30, and Friday afternoon at 4.30. If you'd like to join any of these groups, and we'd love to have you, just call the office and Pam will give you instructions. And finally, next week um, is Palm Sunday. And so we will have palms available. We will put them in the south entry. Um, if you'd like to just stop in, pick up a palm for our Palm Sunday worship. The celebration is starting to come. Our brokenness has really finally started to heal. And so we look forward to the joyous entry of Jesus into Jerusalem. I pray you have a wonderful week as you prepare for that to come. Our closing hymn, Would I Have Answered When You Called, in the faith we sing, 2137, or up on the screen.
may the God of wind and wave go with you into the world, helping you to see the places where healing needs to take place. Go with God. Go in peace. Thank you.